friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach. I follow Weight Watchers and I count calories and macros. Happy Friday, it is Friday, so you know what that means. It is a weigh-in day, WW workshop topic day, and I'm gonna share with you how my week was and an update on the update video about my body scan, plastic surgery, my weight, where I'm going moving forward with my channel, all of those updates are coming in today's update. So if you're excited, give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not, because I upload a weigh-in video every single Friday in five videos per week. Check out the description box down below for nutrition coaching, where I offer personalized to you macros and calories. Again, I follow this. This is how I've lost almost 140 pounds, and I have one-on-one -on -one coaching for accountability. Links, discounts to my favorite things, and of course, we would love to have you join our free community over on Facebook, Jen's WW Tribe. We are 26,000 members strong, and it is such a great supportive community, so head on over and join our Facebook group. So let's jump into my week, my weigh-in, and the WW workshop topic, and those updates on the update. Friday, friends. I hope you had an amazing, amazing week. I had a really good week, an interesting week, but a really good week. It's February. January is over and it is officially the month of February. I let you know that I had a pretty massive update video coming your way, but I wanted to finish out the month of January before giving you that update. I am going to be putting that video out here in the next couple of weeks. You're not going to want to miss it. I mean, we're talking major, major life updates, health updates, weight loss updates, channel updates. So make sure you're subscribed and your bell's on so you don't miss that video. So it is coming. I've been getting a lot of questions on, are you at your goal weight? Are you going to tell us about your body scan? What's happening with your plastic surgery? It's all coming in that update video. Like I said, my week was really good. I am killing my workouts. I mean, girl is sore. I am really, really sore. I'm sore every single day. And because I do a lot of working out, a lot of strength training, my weight on the scale has been all over the map. The beginning of this week, I was up about three pounds from where I was last Friday. Now, I logically know that this isn't fat gain. I did not gain weight. It is just a result of strength training. When we strength train, when we break down our muscle, when it has to rebuild, which is exactly what we're shooting for, it gets inflamed, it retains water, and that can show up as a weight gain on the scale. Remember, the scale only measures mass. So, it's measuring all of that inflammation and that water retention as weight. So I just brush it off. Don't even worry about it, but it's interesting to see how my workouts affect the scale. And it took me once again, most of the week to get, try to get rid of that three pound weight gain on the scale. My food's been really good. We actually ate out a couple of times this week. We ate out Friday at a Mexican restaurant for lunch. And then Saturday, Troy and I went to a local car show here in our community. It was a beautiful day, like 70 degrees, sunny, beautiful. We ate there. I had a hamburger, no bun, some chips. We had dessert. I ate out a couple days this week, and for me, that's sustainable life. That is living a sustainable life, and in fact, today, I am going to a cookie decorating class with some girls from my boot camp, so I'm betting that I may have a cookie tonight as well, and we and food is served, so I'll be eating out again today. That's something that I really love, is that because I've healed my relationship with food, I can go out to eat and do my best just to make healthier choices. I did have a question for you guys when it comes to going out to eat and eating out. Would you be interested in a video on how I navigate that? How do I eat out so often and not gain weight and maintain my weight and continue to lose weight? How do I structure my meals? How do I pick items off the menu? Let me know if you guys would be interested in that video. We even bought Girl Scout cookies at the car show and I have been really good about only having one or two Girl Scout cookies every single day, working it into my day, but still enjoying those really good cookies that only come out once a year. I've been drinking my water. I've been taking my supplements. I just feel really good about where I am and how I've started off 2023. We know that my goal, my word for the year is consistency. And I feel like I've been absolutely nailing that. And I can't wait to see what the month of February brings. But before we jump into my weigh-in, let's chat about this week's WW workshop topic. And that is how to set simple goals for big success. 
I love, love, love this topic because I always say that the key to being successful in long-term weight loss, if you have a lot of weight to lose, is to take baby steps, to set mini goals that lead to that big end goal. And we're gonna talk all about how to do that from WW. What are some of your big goals this year? Is it a big number of weight loss? Is it a big goal to increase physical activity or focus on food or water? What are your big, big goals that you've set for the year? Those big goals are great, but the easiest way to make it to the big goal is to set some smaller goals. So try this, name one of your big goals. Maybe it's to cook a healthy meal every night. Then number two, list smaller goals that build up to it based on where you are now. Let's say you only cook once a week. Maybe you cook two nights a week, cook three nights a week, or even cook four nights a week. Number three is for the smallest goal, list each step needed to accomplish it. So if your goal is to cook two meals this week, you wanna pick two meals to make. Write a shopping list, go to the store, and prep and cook those meals. Number four is to ask yourself, are these steps truly doable for me? This is huge. If the answer is eh, maybe not, go back to number two and brainstorm a little bit smaller goal. If your answer is actually, these are a little bit too easy for me, I could really do three or four meals per week, again, go back and use the next goal listed in number two. And if your answer is, yep, I got this, go ahead and move on to tip number five, which is to write out a specific plan for when, where, and how you'll tackle each of these steps. On Sunday, I'll find two 30 minute recipes and make a shopping list. Monday after work, I'll stop at the store and then I'll cook on Tuesday and Thursday at 6 p.m. By setting small goals that lead to the big goal, that's actually how you're gonna get to the big goal. Let's say, for example, uh, cooking aside, meals aside, that your goal for the year is to lose 100 pounds. If that's all you focus on, you're gonna get one or two months into the year and give up because losing 100 pounds takes a long time. If you have smaller goals set, so maybe your first goal is, I'm gonna lose the first 10 pounds. Or for me, what I did is I wanted to get into the next weight decade from 250 to 240 to 230 to under 200. Those are little mini goals that I set for myself and then I celebrated every time I went into a new weight decade. And all of those weight decades led to an over 130 pound weight loss. So use small goals to get to that big goal. These little goals will give you the momentum you need to get to that big goal, and again, you'll stick with it. I know for me, if I would have set out and said, I'm losing 100 pounds this year, there's no way that I would have been able to stick with that. But because I focused on smaller goals that led to that big goal, it was the motivation that I needed to make it to the big goal. I wanna share with you three fast facts. Number one, setting simple goals is not the easy way, it is the strategic way. And number two, small goals can let us experience success early and often. And number three, this helps us build momentum and increase our confidence for future success. I can't talk about this more. I can't reiterate these facts even more. This is really truly how I was able to get where I am was setting small goals and using those small goals as motivation and momentum to get to the big goal. So I really want you to focus this week on thinking about what's your long-term goal and what are all those small goals that will get you to that long-term goal. Actually, you know what? Let us know down in the comments. What is your big, what is your long-term goal and what are your small step goals to get there? I'm loving this whole keep it simple approach that Weight Watchers is taking for this month's workshop topics. And this one I think is one of the most valuable ones that we've had in quite a while. So now let's jump into my way and let's talk about the goals, the little goals that led to the big goal. As you guys know, the month of January was a month of figuring things out. Am I at my goal weight? Do I still have weight to lose? What are my little mini goals leading up to some of my big goals? which we'll be talking about in that update video. And I didn't know if I was going to be able to continue to lose weight or if I was just really in maintenance mode. And like I said, the last couple weeks, my weight's been doing a lot of this, which is normal based on my activity level and maybe some of the foods that I'm eating, going out to dinner or lunch a couple times in a row can sometimes lead to a little bit of extra fluid, which leads to a weight gain on the scale. So it's really just been a big time of discovery for me Maybe my word for 2023 should have even been discovery, or maybe I should have two words for 2023, but this has really been a time of discovery for me. So when I stepped on the scale with a lot of this and with three pounds up, pretty much the beginning of the week, when I stepped on the scale today, I am actually up point two. So I did take off the majority of the three pounds that I had gained, and I'm still up a little bit on the scale, but 
listen, point two is nothing. I mean, absolutely nothing. I'm not even remotely worried about it. I consider point two a maintain, but this is the first time in a long time that at the end of the week, my weight's actually been up versus maintaining or down but it's no skin off my nose. I'm literally not worried about point two at all. Let's be honest, this is real life. This is the hard truth about weight loss. It isn't always in a downward motion. Sometimes it goes up unexpectedly and sometimes it stays up even on our weigh-in day. You just have to use it as data and move on. It's just point two. I'm not worried about it at all. Even if I had gained more than that, I still wouldn't be worried about it. It's just part of life and weight fluctuation is 100% normal. So we're just moving on up, moving on out to the next week in the month of February. So now I wanna hear from you guys. Let me know, number one, goals. Tell me your big goals. Tell me your small goals to get there. Leave it all down in the comments. And of course, how your week was. How was your way in? Did you gain? Did you lose? Was it what you expected? Let me know everything down in the comments. And of course, again, make sure you're subscribed and your bells on so you don't miss my huge update video. If you enjoyed today's Friday weigh-in workshop topic and of course how my week was, give it a big huge thumbs up. It really helps out my channel and of course I very much appreciate it. And of course check out the description box for nutrition coaching, links and discounts to my favorite things. And last but not least again come join our Facebook group. We would love to have you. Happy Friday friends and I will see you in tomorrow's grocery haul. Bye!